Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to do a playthrough of G.I. Joe, the deck building game. This is a fully cooperative game from the get-go by Renegade Games. It's very similar to Venom Assault. If you've heard of that one, I actually have a playthrough on the channel of that as well. Uh, but this is the official G.I. Joe. Venom Assault is a little off-brand. <laughs> uh, but they're both similar that we're trying to thwart Cobra. I'm excited to show you guys this game. We're going to jump right into setup and then start our playthrough. Let's start by setting up our player decks. So we're each going to have a deck of 10 cards. You first will randomly draw a leader. So I am playing a two player game here. Uh, this is Scarlet is one of ours and Duke is the other. You will have two leader cards. One will start in your deck. It's the unpromoted version. It's got the zero, that's how you know. This one will be set off to the side if during the game we can generate six recruit while Duke is in play, we can actually upgrade him to the better version of himself which is kind of cool so i'll simply set these two aside and then you can see the rest of the deck setup we have six gi joe starters so they're just general joes and then we have a second effort a defuse and a comms so those will be nine cards plus this one will get shuffled into your deck and then we'll draw five of them this will be Duke's starting hand of five cards a second effort his duke card two gi joes and a comms Scarlet, on the other hand, has four GIs and one second effort. Also, since we are playing a two-player game, we are going to use this reserve board. And what you can do during your turn, at any point during your turn, you can decide you're not going to use a card for that specific turn. You can set it in the reserve. Now, you don't generate the recruit. You don't get the benefit of the abilities. But then, at the end of your turn, when you draw up to your hand size of five, you'll then slide this card back into your hand, so your hand size will actually be six. Kind of a cool way to just give you a slight edge at the two-player or solo uh, level. What's also unique about this game is you do have transport cards. Whenever you buy transport cards, they're going to immediately move to the hanger. They're not going to go into your hand. If you use a transport other than the vamp one, uh, after you use it, it'll go into the discard player of the active player's discard pile. And then when they draw it in a future round, it'll simply come back into the hangar. That's essentially the time it takes to repair and fix that vehicle since we used it. The vamp, though, is good for anything. We can use it for as many missions that we want. It'll immediately come back and we use it over and over and over again. So the hangar, each time we go on a mission, we're going to have to use one and only one transport. And over here, it tells us how many Joes it can carry. So this means if we use the vamp, we can put four Joes on that mission. Next, let's set up our story. The game comes with two different stories, the mass device and operation total control. They recommend for your first few games doing the mass device, and then you can move on to operation total control. So we're going to do mass device. How you know which mission you're doing, you're going to see on the back side here, it says mission one. You're going to make sure you're grabbing all mission one cards. Then you see how these gold border ones, these are considered your final act uh, mission that you need to have and you'll those will be the same for whatever mission that you do so if ever i do the mass device mission i'm always going to have these same act one two and three cards however there are a bunch of other missions one two and three that are all dealt with this specific mission one that i have here in this stack and you're going to randomly draw those and place them on top of these missions to create a nine mission deck now they do recommend for your first game to only do uh, a six mission instead of a nine to make it a little bit shorter and because i'm doing this uh, as a video that's what i'm going to do here this means instead of choosing two random ones from these stacks, I'm only, only going to choose one random one. So how they recommend you do this is you start with the non-finale missions uh, for that specific act. So these are all act one. You can see the ones up here. I'm going to shuffle these up and then place one face down. Then normally if you're playing the full game, you'd grab a second one, put it down, and then you'd put your finale for act one here. I'm going to do the same thing for act two and three. I've set up my mission stack with the Act 3 finale on the bottom. I'm then going to flip it over. I don't want to see the other missions. This will be our first mission that we need to complete during the game. And at this point, it feels like a good time to talk about how we win or lose the game. So how we win the game is by getting through all of these missions. If we defeat that final mission, we win the game. 
we lose in three different ways. One is if we get to the top of the threat meter, which you'll see in a second. The second one is if the Cobra battalions are covering up five of the spaces on our lineup and we need to use our place of six and we can't. And you'll see that in a second. And then finally, if our main deck of cards, which is essentially where we're recruiting cards from, ever runs out. So those are the three ways we lose. Because I'm only doing a six mission set instead of a nine, I am going to play with a couple expert cards just to make it a little bit more challenging. We're going to have all Cobra officers have plus one difficulty and all story missions have plus one difficulty. So that's going to be in effect for the entire game. Uh, normally you would not do that. I'm just doing that to provide a little more challenge. So that means we need four successes to complete this mission. Because of the expert mode I chose, we need five to complete this mission. There are three type of Cobra cards, Cobra Battalion cards. There's exactly five of those. Cobra Troopers, these can actually go into your deck. And then when you draw them, uh, they're basically a dead card or you'll have to complete that mission to get it out of your deck. And you can see it's a mission uh, difficulty of one. And then we have Commanders and these are all different. These could come into play because of complications or because of specific missions. Uh, same with these two. You'll just want to make sure to have them face up and set off to the side because you'll be asked to put them out on the board as you play. There's also a complication deck. This deck is super fun because you don't get to see what complications are involved with a mission until you actually go to that mission, send out your Joes, and you don't know what's going to happen. I love this. This provides that unknown when you're playing a deck builder. Uh, you're going to have three different levels of complication cards, level one, two, and three. The level twos and threes won't come into play until you get to act two of the uh, entire game. So since we're only in act one at the beginning, I'm just going to take these level ones, shuffle them up. These two I'll set aside. Once we complete the mission finale for act one and move to act two, we're going to take these cards and shuffle them into this deck. And then the same thing with the um, once we move to missions for act three. Here we have the threat meter. So this meter is one of the ways that we lose. If ever this gets up to here, we're automatically done. They have completed their plan. Cobra wins the game. Uh, each round, this is going to be moving up as well as the effects on the side of the board will come into play. Just make sure that depending upon the player count, you have it on the correct side. There's a one, two and a three, four side. Uh, yeah, so since we're playing with two players, I will put it on the one, two side. Finally, we're going to set up our main deck. So the first thing is you're going to make sure that all these service rifles are off to the side. You can always purchase those for two recruit if you want. Uh, but then the rest of the cars that aren't in the uh, player's decks are then going to be placed in the main deck. That does not include any of the starter cards, of course. So you're not going to have zero recruit cards in here. They're all going to cost something. There's different transports that you can buy. There's Joes. There's utilities. There's gears. It's awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle this up and reveal six of these. So there's going to have six of these available for us to purchase as well as the service rifle. We have our six cards all set up and ready to go, as well as our service rifles here. And with that, I think we're ready to start the game. What's important to know, though, is right now there is no story mission active for that whole first round. So each player is going to get one turn where there's no mission in play, nothing for us to fight. We're just going to try and upgrade our deck a little bit. After that, then we start by drawing a mission and we start our play. And one other thing I want to mention, everything is resolved in this game with dice. So if you don't like dice, this game isn't for you, but I love it. That means it's not guaranteed. You don't know. Are you going to succeed or not? You got to roll and look for those stars. All right, let's start our playthrough. Here we have our player turn order sequence. So you start with the start phase, then go to the action phase, and then your end phase. Each player is going to do that, and then you'll go to the end of round. Except for the first round in the game, you will refill story missions. So that first round will, will not have a story mission. We'll refill at the beginning of the second round. Then we resolve any start of turn effects. We'll go on any missions first. Then we can do recruiting. And then we have our end phase, where we have any story mission effects. And then discard your hand, and then draw back up to five. Duke will start us off. Here's his five cards in hand. He's going to skip the mission phase. He could potentially send some of his GI Joes on a mission, but we don't have any missions right now. We're just going to go ahead and try and level up our deck. So I have in my hand three total recruit. These two cards give us zero recruit. What I'm actually thinking of doing is I'm going to set this second effort card. You can see it has this symbol M here. That means you can only use this card when you're on a mission. And you have at least one Joe that's on the mission. 
if you have a Joe on the mission, after you roll dice, you can then use this ability. You can play the card and then use its effects. We could reroll one die. Well, that might be helpful next round. So I'm going to place this card into the reserve. That means essentially it's out of our hand for this turn, but next turn I'll have six cards in hand instead of five. I do also have Duke in my hand, which later on is awesome. We can use him to put one GI from our discard pile into our hand, but we don't have a discard pile. So that's kind of useless. We just have three recruit. With the three recruit, I think I'm going to grab this low light card. You can see it costs two. It'll give us one recruit when we have it. If we're ever on the threat track in the red space, it's also going to give us plus one wild skill. It gives us three trackers, so if ever we're trying to do a mission where we need tracker as one of our skills, we get to roll three dice because of it. So I'm going to grab this card. Now, unlike most deck builders, this card is going to go onto the top of my deck, so I'm going to draw it right off the get-go, which is really nice. Also, this game you immediately replace after you've uh, placed a card or purchased a card or something has happened to a card that's in this row. I still have one recruit left, but there's nothing here for me to buy for one. So I'm going to end my turn, discard my cards, draw five more, one, two, three, four, five, and there's my low light. And then I also get to add in my second effort card. We'll now move over to Scarlet's team, and she just has a straight four recruit. And once again, she's going to take that second effort card and put it out into the reserve. With four recruit, we could get detonator. Target player may destroy one card from their discard pile. Well, that's kind of nice, but we already have abilities to do that with her. This one says, if the mission fails, you may defeat one side mission you control. This one over here, if you control a leader, you gain plus two recruit. I think I'm going to start with expert training, purely because it's going to help me with recruiting at the beginning. So I'm going to place that on top of my deck. We'll immediately replenish it with uh, in barbecue. We'll then draw five cards, and then we get to add, and look at that's the one that we just purchased, and we get to add the one that we set aside into our hands. So now we have a hand of six cards. We're now at the end of rounds. So we have to activate any penalties. We don't have a story mission out. We'll check the threat meter for any effect, and then no matter what, the threat meter has to go up one space. Now, you can see it says solo here. If you're playing solo, you actually get two turns before you have end of round. That's why that's there. But since we're playing two players, we won't do that. Looking at the threat meter, we can see here this says starting round only, but that's the only effect. If we were in green, let's say we were right here, we would have to push this up one space, and then, because at, we also always have to push the threat meter up one, you actually have to move it up two when you're in the green. The blue, we don't do anything for the threat effect, and then simply we increase it by one. Now, this is a starting space only, so if ever we can push the threat down, you can never go back to the blue. You're going to have to be at the green for the lowest. Uh, over here, every time we activate this, we're going to put out one of these Cobra Battalions, and they're going to be placed onto the lineup cards and block them so we cannot recruit them. And don't forget, if ever all five of those are out and we need to place a sixth, that's one of the ways we lose. To start Duke's turn, we're going to draw the top story mission and put it out into play. Protect the satellite. Cobra has used a mysterious device to teleport a massive battalion into the facility to steal the military satellite. We can see over here, if we use a tank on this mission, so we can get different cars. Uh, actually, for an example, the one that's in here, this APC, if we use this, we would get the benefit that this car gave us, but this car doesn't give us any benefit. The nice thing about this car is it can hold eight Joes, which is awesome. A lot of the vehicles will have a benefit here that says plus two tech if you need this specific type of vehicle. I just wanted to show you that. I'll shuffle this back in. Over here, this tells you how many complication cards to draw. So I'm going to shuffle up my level one complications, and I'm going to draw two of them. I don't get to see them until I go on to the mission. Part of something I love about this game, you don't exactly know what you're going to get. There might be precision strikes. There might be things that increase the difficulty. It might bring out uh, an officer into play. You just don't know. Right now, though, what we do know is they're only level one ones, so they're not as challenging. As we progress through the game, you'll get level two and level three cards in there. Next, you're going to see an effect here, and the effect states, when this card enters play, we're going to add two Cobra Battalions to the lineup. You always do the Cobra uh, Battalions from left to right, unless they tell you differently, so we're going to place two of those out. Now, down here, if and when we decide to do this as a mission, which, by the way, this is a group mission, any group mission, you can actually have any amount of players join up together to try and complete it, and you'll see how that works when we do it. Uh, there's also going to be side missions, which is what these Cobra Battalions are. 
Uh, those side missions, only one player can do them. Uh, there's some exceptions. You might get a card that lets you do otherwise, but generally that's the case. So uh, with the story missions, you only get one chance. This is not explained well in the rule book. <laughs> you only get one chance to complete the story missions. If you fail, this thing happens and you discard it and you continue on. Because remember, failing these missions isn't the way that you're going to lose. You're going to lose by the threat meter, the Cobra Battalions, or you run out of cards from your main deck. However, in general, those failure effects are pretty bad. Like this is going to push up your threat meter two spaces. However, if we succeed when we do this uh, mission, we can reduce the threat meter by two, which is really nice. I do also want to mention here that side missions, you can try multiple times. So if I fail this, this will still stay out there. Nothing happens. I'd have to do it again using new Joes. Could even do it on the same turn, but it's going to stay out there. If I fail this story mission, I discard it and draw the next one. I almost forgot to mention this four here denotes how many successes I need to roll on dice when I try and complete this mission. And don't forget, I'm doing the expert mode where all of these have plus one difficulty. So I need a five or higher of successes in order to complete that mission. Now, they say you do this specifically, you're going to set this aside and you get to see what the next mission is. So you get to see what you're looking for for specific skills in order to complete it. That's the other thing I forgot to talk about. You can see here we have marksman or tech. What that means is when you send your Joes on this mission, you can either choose marksman or tech as the skill you're going to use. And all of the Joes that have those marksman's tech or wild, whichever one you choose, uh, gets to add their dice to the test for this specific mission. Any Joe can be used, however, such as the uh, beginning Joes. They have zero skill. You see that? Uh, but that just means that they provide one of any type of skill. So you can always forego the skill that the Joe has for just one single wild. So they'll at least give you one die. Okay, with that out of the way, we can always look at the next one. We can see here we're going to need vehicles and stealth. And once again, it's an or. Sometimes it's an and. If it's an and, you could do both. If it's an or, you're going to have to choose when you go on that mission. Because of the enters play mission effect, I'm going to place out two Cobra Battalions. Now, I should have this as a straight line, but it just makes it easier for recording purposes. So think of this as being the farthest left and that being the farthest right. So I'm going to go like this. Here I have my hand of six cards for my turn. I think I am going to go on a mission. Let's, let's start it. So this is how you start a mission. The first thing we need to do is choose which mission we're going to do. We're going to do this side mission, the Cobra Battalion. We need two total successes, and we can see here we can choose any one skill to be the skill we're going to use for it. So what I first need to do is determine what vehicle I'm going to use. Well, that's a hard choice. I only have one, the vamp. <laughs> the nice thing about the vamp, though, is unlike any other vehicle after it's being used, it has to be placed into a player's discard pile. And then when they draw it, it immediately gets placed into the hangar. The vamp will go back into the hangar and we can use it over and over again. So we can have up to four Joes on this mission. It just so happens I have four Joes in my hand, so why the heck not? And I have one that has a tracker ability, so our skill. I am going to choose the tracker skill, so that way for this test, I will have three dice for that one. I'll have one for this one because once again, they don't have any symbol, so I can get one wild from them. I can get one wild from this one and one wild from this one, and I'm looking for two successes. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six dice. Half the sides are blanks. Two sides are a single success, and one side is a double success. I'll roll up my six dice, and I have one, two, three, four, five. I have more than enough successes. This means I defeated that specific side mission. So I'm going to remove all those cards. I'm going to remove the Cobra Battalion, putting it back in its pile. And now we could potentially purchase the Leatherneck. Now, these cards don't go in the discard pile, but they get set aside. If I wanted to go on another mission, I certainly could, but I don't have any Joes left, so I'm not going to be able to do that. But there are many times in the game where you're going to go on multiple missions in one round. Also, that vamp is going to go back into the hangar. It ended up I didn't need either one of these cards. This one would have been nice. I defeated a side mission so I could push down the threat meter. But remember, I can't push it past or back into that blue space. So that's going to be useless. I am going to put second effort back into my reserve so I can have it for next turn. If you look at the GI starter cards, it states here, if this card is part of a successful mission, which it is, you may destroy this card. Generally, I would do that, except for that I have four recruit here that I kind of want to use. 
And that's important because if I did destroy one of those starter Joes, I would only have three recruits. So that is important to note. It's not like one of those games where you play the cards and you gain the, the recruit regardless of if the card's destroyed during that turn. The moment that card's destroyed, I don't get the recruit anymore. So I think I'm going to go for Leatherneck Joe. I'm going to pop him on top of my deck. Immediately replace this here with a Smart Missile. Ooh, that's a nice one. And then for the end of my turn, I'm going to discard these five cards. I will draw. I have two cards on uh, for my deck right now. And then I will shuffle my discard pile and draw three more. Here's our hand for the next turn, and we will then add in that second effort. Moving to Scarlet's turn, let's go ahead and use our vamp to do this Cobra Battalion side quest. We are going to start off with Scarlet herself. If Scarlet starts a mission, target player, and target player can be any player at all. They don't even have to be on that mission, but we are going to choose ourselves. The target player may destroy one card in their discard pile. We're going to say a Sia to this GI Joe. We're then going to add two more regular Joes to this. So we have a total of one, two, three Joes. That's all I've got in my hand. I'm going to do the martial arts skill. So I get two, three, four dice trying to get two successes. We'll give four dice a roll and we have exactly two successes. Since we were successful, we can remove this Cobra Battalion, and now Wild Bill is available to us. And if you look at him, he's kind of awesome. He gives three wild, so no matter what, he's going to give you three. <laughs> that is awesome. He's going to give you three dice, no matter which thing you're doing, because they're wild. We don't have any more missions that we can even go on. Well, that's not true. We could do the main mission. I'm definitely not doing that. So now let's go to the recruit phase. And you know what? Before that, I do think I'm going to take this GI starter, GI Joe, and I'm going to remove him because he was part of a successful mission. I'm also going to take my diffuse card here and place it in the reserve so I can put it back into my hand for the next turn. Now, I'd really like to buy that wild bill. I have a total of one, two, three, four recruit. But if you look at this expert training card, if you control a leader, gain two more recruit. Well, guess who my leader is? She's right here, Scarlet. You can see it says leader. So she's actually worth one plus two, which is three recruit. Four plus two there is six. Six recruit means Wild Bill is going into my deck and we'll replenish that with the Hawk. We'll then end our turn by discarding our four cards here. We will draw the two that we have in our deck. So we have comms and Wild Bill. We'll shuffle up our discard pile and draw three more. And we have two GIs and a second effort. So that's our five cards. Plus then we'll put the diffuse into our hand. We've now moved to the end of round. We look at our story mission. There's no specific effects for this card. We then go to the threat meter. The threat meter tells us to move this up by one. Then, because we're at the end of the round, this always has to be increased by one. So we've just moved that up two spaces. Now we'll move back to Duke's turn. The only mission that we could do this turn is the story mission. I don't think I'm quite ready for it. I actually think this one I am, but the next one I'm not. I need vehicles or stealth. I don't have a lot of that. So what I'm thinking of doing is just buying some cards this round. So I have one, two, three, four, five, five total uh, recruit. I am going to take that second effort again and put it in the reserve. Five total recruit. With five recruit, let's grab Ripcord for one. We'll immediately replace that. And we have Disarm. Oh, I could buy that. If you defeated a Cobra Battalion this turn, draw a card. Oh, kind of cool. But I think I've got to go for Barbecue because he gives us some vehicle skills. And we'll flip this one over and we have a Zap. That means we'll simply discard our five cards. And we'll draw one, two, three, four, five. Then we'll add in that other card that we had. We've got Duke, which is awesome. Ripcord. And of course, our second effort. With Scarlet's hand this time, I think we're ready to take on that first story mission. So let's show you how this works. Just like always, you have to choose one of the vehicles in the hangar. Well, the only one I have is the vamp. So the max amount of Joes that we can send on this is four. I can now ask Duke, since it's Scarlet's turn, and say, hey, Duke, do you want to play any of your Joes for this specific mission? He's definitely going to. What I'm going to do over here, though, is I'm going to play a Wild Bill. Uh, that will for sure give me three dice no matter which one of the specific marksman or tech that I use, which is why I felt like that was a good idea. And then we will do two of the regular Joes, 
which will each give us one. Duke then will also include Ripcord, but by playing Ripcord, that means on his turn, he's gonna have one less card in his hand. However, it also means that any of these cards that have the M symbol on it, the uh, mission effect, he can now use that to help affect this mission. So we have four Joes going together as a team to try and take this on. Remember, I need five successes. I'm going, it doesn't even matter which one I choose since I'm only using wild characters. I'm gonna be rolling three, four, five, six, seven dice looking for five successes. Don't forget though, before we roll those dice, we now need to draw and reveal our complication cards. Here's our first one. This is the Rattler's Attack. Now this is what we call a precision strike. One of the players that's in this mission has to take control of this. And at the end of their turn, they're gonna increase the threat meter by one. We get to choose the max amount of these that you can have is two. Uh, I'm definitely going to have Duke take this since right now it's Scarlet's turn and she's using all of her Joes. So if uh, she took this at the end of her turn, this would happen. So we'll have Duke take this one. Let's then flip the second one. Oh, we have captured. It says story mission. Sometimes you'll flip these cards when it's not a story mission effect. And so this one would actually just get placed by the story mission, uh, uh, the card itself, and would go into effect when you did this mission. Since we're doing a story mission, this works really well. We have to discard one Joe from the mission. Well, I can discard one of these wimpy Joes, that's okay. But remember, I'm not gonna gain the recruit then for my turn, and I don't get the dice for this, and I'm only rolling six dice for five successes. This could get interesting. Let's see if we can do this. We have one, two, three, only three successes, and we need five. So the first thing we're going to do is play our second effort, and this is from um, Scarlet. Doesn't matter who it is. I'm gonna set these up here so I don't get them confused. I have three successes. We can re-roll one of these. I need it to be a success. That's a success, that's four. Okay, guess what? I also have another second effort here, and that one is from Duke. That'll be played, and it's going to go into his discard pile. And we're gonna roll this up, come on. Oh my gosh, that's two successes. That means we completed the mission. Talk about an awesome team. So that means we've completed this, it was a success, it could have been a failure, and we'd move up our threat meter by two, but now we're gonna reduce our threat meter by two because we succeeded at stopping this mission. We'll push that threat meter down two spaces. As much as I love these starter Joes because they do give us recruit, I do think I'm going to uh, destroy this one because he successfully completed that mission. Duke will also have to take the two cards that he played and put them in the discard pile so he will not have these two cards during his next turn. That means Scarlet only has these three cards left. Remember, we did use Wild Bill, but we can still use his three recruit. I'm going to take this Diffuse, once again, put it uh, aside for the reserve so I can get it back in my hand, and I'm going to use that three recruit. This smart missile looks just too good to be true. Target player puts one card from their discard pile into their hand. Yeah, that's awesome, and we'll replenish that with Torpedo. Scarlet will then end her turn, discarding her cards, drawing five more, and adding this one to her hand. We'll move to the end of round. There's currently no active story mission. The story mission comes out at the beginning of a player's turn, so that will happen at the beginning of Duke's turn. So simply, this will get moved up one because of that effect, and then it'll be moved up one simply because it always moves up at the end of each round. Now we'll move back to Duke's turn. What do you say we see if we can rescue the scientist? The scientist responsible for the MASS device technology should know how to counteract its effects, but the scientist is in Cobra's clutches. We would gain any sort of benefit of a vehicle that is an airplane to do this, because essentially you're helicoptering and picking her up. Uh, we need X complications. Add complications to this mission equal to the number of players. So I'm going to draw two more. I'll draw these top two right here, set them aside. It states at the end of each round, that's not at the end of each player turn, but at the end of each round, each player gains one Cobra Trooper. Those Cobra Troopers will go into your discard pile. They have the same back as your player cards, and when you draw them, it's a dead card in your hand that you'd have to actually fight to get rid of. Once again, we need a total of four plus one, so five total successes to complete this. Duke knows he's got that Rattler attack in front of him, but he's going to say, you know what, forget all that. I don't want to deal with those Cobra Troopers. I think we're going to go right for the story mission again. Can you believe this? Using the vamp, we can bring four Joes. The first Joe we're going to bring is Duke. Duke has an ability, put one GI from your discard pile into your hand. 
don't mind if I do. I think I'm going to grab for myself Ripcord because he gives us wild. So let's also bring Ripcord for number two. We will definitely bring uh, Barbecue for number three. And then we can ask Scarlet if she wants to bring one Joe or not. Looking at her hand, it doesn't look like it's worth it. So we're just going to do a basic Joe for number four. We're definitely going to do vehicles. So let's see how many dice do we get to roll. One plus three, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So right now we're at seven, but we have not revealed the two complication cards. So seven will flip this one that says story mission, reroll one hit. Oh man. Okay. And then the second one is, oh, put major blood into play. Major blood isn't terrible, but it does say at the start of each player's turn, place one Cobra Battalion on the uncovered card in the lineup with costs five or higher. So he's going to try and accelerate the Cobra Battalions, uh, but it does give us stuff to defeat, and he is a five. Remember, I'm playing where they're all plus one difficulty with marksmen or vehicles. The nice thing is, though, he's not going to affect this mission. So the only thing that's affect affecting this mission is I have to re-roll one hit when I do my roll. I've got seven dice looking for five successes. I have to re-roll this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> yes. That's our second story mission completed, and we will now have completed Act 1. We can choose a target player to draw two cards. I could choose myself, but I think I'm going to actually have... Yeah, I'm going to have Scarlet draw two cards, because then she'll have a hand of, of what, eight cards, I think? That'll be awesome. She's going to draw both a regular GI and a Wild Bill. We also get to push down our threat meter by one. Now, just because I want to show you this, I don't really recommend doing this. I'm going to try this. <laughs> I am going to then use my vamp to also try and do the rattler attack. I have one more GI in my hand. I'll only roll one die, but if I happen to get the two successor, I can also complete this uh, side quest and get this out of here. We'll roll our one die, and are you serious? That is two successes. We just completed that mission. That should not have happened, but that GI is ridiculous. Because he's so ridiculous, I'm also going to uh, remove him from the game. <laughs> he's so good, I don't want to see him anymore. It must just mean they're retired. We'll now move to the recruitment phase. We have one, two, three, four, five total recruitment left. We're going to grab Torpedo. We'll put him on top of our deck. We'll replenish that with a proximity mine. We will then discard these cards. We will draw up to five. I've got four here. So we've got some more basic GIs and a comms. And our last card will be one of these second efforts. And then now at the start of Scarlet's turn, uh, we now need to place a Cobra Battalion on one of these cards that cost five or higher. So let's do this APC since I don't seem to be buying any, uh, any of the vehicles. You know, this vamp is doing pretty great for us. We're now starting Act 2, so that means all these Act 2 complication cards, plus the discarded complication cards that I had from Act 1, I'm going to shuffle up along with the ones that I haven't used, so now my complication deck is larger. This one is Destro Attacks. Destro is working with Cobra Commander. With this ruthless foe in the mix, the Joes have their work cut out for them. We need to draw one complication card, so I'll just put that aside. And then we have put Destro into play. Destro is no joke. He is an officer. We can also do a group mission against him. Explosives and martial arts. Reroll all two success dice results against the story mission. At the end of each round, draw one complication. Yeah, and he's a six with my uh, expert mode. Whew, I might have bit off a little more than I can chew. That's going to be fun. We also, of course, need six successes for this, and I totally forgot to do this last time, but we do get to see what the next one is. We only need two successes. Put Baroness into play. This mission gets plus one difficulty for each mission in the success pile, and it's any one skill. Oh, so I have two in the success pile? That's right. Uh, so this would actually be a lot harder if you played the full game because you would have five. This would be a seven because you'd have five missions, uh, well, likely five missions in the success pile to get there. Look at Scarlet's hand, though. It is somewhat insane. She's got eight cards in hand. She has a smart missile. Oh, my goodness. Expert training. Yeah, uh, I definitely am going to do, I'm thinking Destro, maybe, because martial arts. We've got two martial arts here. Uh, yeah, let me think about this. With Destro being a six and no joke, we're definitely going to try and take him out first. So let's bring the vamp. 
we are going to do Scarlet for sure. Uh, her ability is useless. No one has anything in the discard pile, which is a bummer, but she's going to give us two martial arts. We're then going to add one GI, so that's going to give us three dice. We're then going to ask Duke if he wants to play any, and he's definitely going to play Torpedo. Uh, that will give us three more martial arts, so that's three, four, five, six. Oh, that's only six. I can do one more. I think we have to do it. We're going to add Wild Bill. So there's our four Joes. Wild Bill will give us three, so we're going to roll three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now there's only eight dice, so I'll roll eight and then any misses I'll re roll. Nine dice, six successes. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. I have enough there. We are good. We just took out Destro. With taking Destro out, we'll put him back with the commanders. I am definitely going to burn this G.I. Joe here. He did great. This one will go to the discard pile for Duke. Scarlet's going to play the Smart Missile, so the target player can put one card from their discard pile into their hand. We're going to get Torpedo back into the hand of Duke, so Duke still has his five cards in hand. Then I think we're just going to take that Vamp out again with two basic G.I. Joes, rolling two dice, trying to get two successes. You got this, G.I.s. You've got this. Three successes, no problem. And with those two successful G.I.s, let's go ahead and get rid of both of them and get rid of this. Wow, that was... Awesome. That was some pretty great missioning by Scarlet. Let's look at how much recruit we have. We have three plus one, which is four plus one, which is five, six, seven. We have a leader, eight, nine. We have nine recruit. I think it's time we level up Scarlet. So this is going to cost us six. We're going to promote her. She's going to upgrade into this card with some martial arts and tech, which is awesome. And we'll put her on top of the deck. That was six. We'll burn this one. I did almost forget we just completed a side mission. If you defeat a side mission this turn, I can push down the threat by one. We'll go back down to here. Sweet. We have three more recruit left. Let's grab Zap and we'll replenish that with a Skyhawk. Oh, finally, a really good looking, not that expensive <laughs> uh, looking ship. We've discarded our cards. We'll draw the top four from our deck. We'll then shuffle up. Look at how small our deck is. I love having a small, lean deck in a deck builder. Our fifth one is Wild Bill. We'll go to end of round. We will move this up one because of the threat mark, uh, threat track, and then one for being the end of round. We'll start the next turn for Duke. When doing that, we'll have to place a Cobra Battalion again, and we'll put it on the APC. I think the only thing we're going to do is try and take on this Cobra Battalion. We're going to choose Martial Arts. We're using the VAMP. That's the only uh, vehicle we have. So three dice here, plus one, which is four, plus one more, which is five. Five dice, needing two successes. We're good. That means we can remove this Cobra Battalion. And then because we were successful, both of these GIs are going to be toast. That means half of our GIs are gone in this deck. All of the GIs are gone on Scarlet's deck. Wow, that's awesome. We are going to place second effort in reserve so we can get that back. Torpedo's total uh, recruit is only two. I think deciding between those two, I might go with dis... No, you know, Proximity Mine can really save you. So I'm going to grab Proximity Mine, put that on top of our deck. We'll replenish it with Deep Six. Then let's go ahead and do comms here. We can discard one uncovered card from the lineup and replace it. That's what I think we're going to do. We're going to discard Disarm. It's not terrible, but I feel like there's better ones. Oh, Ace, that looks cool. All oh, vehicles and a wild skill if you are using, like, let's say, Skyhawk. Cool. We'll end our turn by drawing five cards. Let's see what we get. Oh, that's looking good. Some proximity mines. I like it. Don't forget. We'll slide in that second effort. And then at the beginning of Scarlet's turn, that battalion, they just keep coming out trying to take on that APC. At some point, I promise I will actually buy some more vehicles, but assume I'm always using the vamp. <laughs> we're going to try and take on Major Blood. I'm tired of seeing those Cobra Battalions. So we're going to start off with Scarlet. Now, Scarlet has the effect that if you start a mission with her, each player may destroy one card from their discard pile. Scarlet doesn't have any, but we do have one here for Duke. I think he's going to get rid of comms. It's, it's a good card, but it's not amazing, and I'd prefer to draw other things. So that will give us four martial arts or four tech. Well, he's looking for marksmen and vehicles, so that means we're only playing or using one skill for her, but that's okay. We have Wild Bill, which will give us three, so that's a total of four. 
then since this is a group mission, we can have Duke help, and Duke is going to play the Leatherneck. So the Leatherneck states, first of all, it's three more marksmen. If this mission fails, you may defeat one side quest you control. Well, we don't control any, but uh, we'll get three, four, five, six, seven dice to get five successes. Here's our seven dice, and it'd be nice if I actually rolled them all in here. Let's see, we have one, two, three, four. We do not have enough. Well, the good thing is we do have a second effort. So I'll use that to re-roll one of these dice. Come on, oh, beautiful, there it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Enough to take out blood. We do also have this Cobra Battalion, so we're going to use Zap. Zap has three explosive skills, so we'll roll three dice looking for two successes. Let's see it, Zap, you can do it. We've got two successes, we're good. That means we've cleared out all the officers and we have no side quests out. I love it. So with the recruit we have left, three, four, five, six, let's go ahead and grab the deep six and we'll replenish that with a tomahawk. Now that's what I'm talking about, five. The reason I didn't want to buy this is you can only bring two Joes. They better be amazing Joes. Five Joes? Yeah. Scarlet's discarded her cards. She's got four here, and that's actually her entire deck. So then she's going to take her discard pile of four more cards. And let's see, we've got Zap for her fifth. At the end of the round, we have no story mission effects. So we'll simply move up because of this once and then once from the actual end of round effect. So now we're into the yellow. That means one of the Cobra Battalions will go out on to our lineup at the end of each turn while we're in this. The red, you can see there's no effect, but remember, we lose if it gets up to here. So it goes pretty quick. Moving back to Duke's turn, I don't love his hand. I think what I'm going to do is simply keep that second effort. I've got four uh, total recruit. I'm going to go ahead and recruit this detonator and immediately replenish it with a tranquilizer dart. Oh, that one's kind of cool. I'm then going to discard these four. I'm going to draw five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's flip these over. Oh yeah, lots of Joes. And then we'll put the secondary effort here. Then going back to Scarlet, we're really looking for marksman or martial arts and I just don't have that. I've got recon, vehicles, explosives. Yeah, so we're not gonna be able to get six successes with any of this. So two, three, four, five, six total recruit. I think I'm just going to buy this Tomahawk. I wish this uh, gave us some really cool abilities, but it's plus two explosives. I don't need that. And if it was an actual airplane mission, it'd also give us plus three tracker, but we don't have that. But that will immediately go to the hangar, and then we'll flip over the new one. That's awesome. That's a martial arts card. Okay, that's good. Remember, the Tomahawk doesn't go into our deck, not until we use it, then it just goes into our discard pile. So we're going to discard all of our cards. We're going to draw, we've got four here, one, two, three, four, and then I have to shuffle my discard pile, and we'll draw one more. Let's grab this one. We have deep six. We'll move to the end of round. We're going to place a Cobra Battalion out onto the Hawk. I really want the Hawk, but... It is what it is, that's from this effect. Then the end of round thing just simply states we move one up on the threat tracker. Okay, now we're back to Duke. Duke is ready. We're going to do this Cobra Battalion. We're going to use the Duke card so that we can put Leatherneck into our hand. Awesome. We're then gonna send Leatherneck and then, we're, actually, you know what? No, we're not. We're going to keep Leatherneck in our hand because it's a marksman card. Beautiful idea, Colin. We're going to keep that, and we're actually going to put it in the reserve. So I'm going to put this right now into the reserve so I can get that into my hand next time. Oh, I love this game. Okay, so we've got uh, Duke for a total of, let's see, two recon. We'll do both of these, three, four. So that's a total of four dice. Let's make it five. We can do that. Uh, we'll also add the barbecue. <laughs> no vehicles. We're choosing recon as... Well, why don't we choose vehicles? Let's choose vehicles as our one skill. So that's three, four, five, six. We're rolling six dice, looking for two successes. Of course, using that vamp. Six dice, two successes. We're good. With taking out that Cobra Battalion, no problem. We are going to burn one of these G.I. Joes. Thank you for your service. And then for being able to purchase cards, we have one, two, three, four, plus two more here, which is six. You know what we're going to do? We're going to buy the upgraded Duke card. We'll now have three recon instead of two and three marksmen. We can put one GI from your discard pile into your hand. GIs on this mission gain an additional plus one wild skill. <laughs> That's awesome. That goes to the top of our deck. We'll draw our two cards from the top of our deck. Add three more to that. Oh, we've got Ripcord. 
Uh, and then not, on, not only that, we also have Leatherneck Suite. I think it's story mission time for Scarlet bringing in the vamp because that's the best ever. <laughs> I am going to play Scarlet. Unfortunately, I'm not going to use the effect. We've destroyed enough cards. She gives us four martial arts, so we're definitely going to be choosing martial arts for this. We're then going to add in Wild Bill. Wild Bill will give us three plus since we're in the yellow space of the threat tracker. That's plus one hit. So we automatically have one hit already. So we only need five more successes. So we're rolling seven dice there. And let's go ahead and play it deep six, just in case that will give us eight dice. Let's then draw our complication card and we have overwhelming force. So this is another precision strike. Martial arts or marksman at the end of your turn. We're definitely going to give this to, oh, actually, I think we have to give it to her. We're going to give it to her. We'll deal with the threat increase. When a precision strike complication is revealed, it must be assigned to one player. A precision strike can be assigned to any player, regardless of when it's revealed. So I'm actually going to give it to Duke. Eight dice, looking for five successes since we have one auto success. And we have one, two, three, four, five. Oh my gosh, just barely. Do you see that? But that'll work. We get to push our threat meter down by one, and we're going to choose Duke to draw two more cards. Thank you very much, Duke. So we will draw uh, Diffuse, which is terrible, and Barbecue, which also is terrible. Bummer. I won't be sad about pushing this down by one, though. We're then going to grab this second effort card in our hand and set it aside in the reserve so we can have it for next round. We have a total of three, four, five, six, seven total recruit. Let's get this APC. That way we can have up to eight Joes on a mission. I think that sounds awesome. I wanted Hawk, but I think I'm going to hold off on that. Oh, we've got reinforcements. We'll then discard our four cards. We'll go ahead and draw one, two, three, four, and we're going to have to shuffle one of those up and put it in our hands. Oh, this hand is terrible. Let's see. We'll give it a good shuffle like so, and we'll draw this one, and we've got Scarlet. End of round, no active mission. We'll simply move this up and put one of those Cobra Battalions back out onto Hawk. To end Act 2, we have grabbed the rare Crystal Element. Cobra won't give up as the rare elements to power the mass device without a fight, and it looks like they've learned from their earlier mistakes. So we're going to have two complication cards. I've got them here. We have put Baroness into play. This mission gets plus one difficulty for each mission in the success pile, so I have three. That means this is a five plus the one. That's actually a six. And uh, we have any one skill we can choose for that one, which is nice. The next one, we're going to be looking at vehicles and stealth. At the end of each player's turn, we're going to be pushing up the threat meter. Woo, that one's going to be fun. Okay, the Baroness. She is a five, stealth and tracker. Story missions must be started by a leader. So they have to have the leader keyword on them. For example, both Duke and Leatherneck are leaders. You can see they have leader on there. Duke's going to start off with this overwhelming force. We need three successes, martial arts or marksman. We're going to go all marksman. We've got three from Duke. I don't have any of the, my GI Joes in my discard pile, so I can't use that. But three plus three is six dice. I feel like that's pretty good. Six dice, three successes, one, two, three, four, five. We are good. We completed that. Because we did that, I can play Diffuse. If you defeated a side mission this turn, push down the threat meter. We're back to just the beginnings of the yellow. I like that. We'll then use a basic GI and barbecue here using vehicles as our skill. So we get to roll four dice, trying to get two successes on the Cobra Battalion. Four dice going for two successes. We're good. That means we can retire this G.I. Joe. I'm then going to set Ripcord aside in the reserve so I can put him into my hand at the end of this turn. Our total recruit for Duke is 2, 4, 6, 8. Well, we're definitely going for the Hawk. That'll go on top of our deck. We have one left over. Is this going to be one? No, it's not, but that's okay. Uh, we'll discard these. We will then draw. Let's see. We have one, two, three, four. We have exactly five. Plus, we'll have Ripcord into our hand. Wow, lots of Joes. We have lots of Joes. For Scarlet's turn, I think the only thing we're going to do is the Smart Missile. Target player puts one card from their discard pile back into their hand. We're going to choose Duke, so Duke can put himself back into his hand. <laughs> How awesome is that? Then, I think... Let's go ahead and put second effort back uh, into the reserve, and let's see how much recruit we have. We have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight ridiculous recruit. 
let's buy this tranquilizer dart for four and then uh, let's do jinx for three that's seven so that should be it oh the rocket launcher is amazing i want that so bad we'll then discard our hand at the end of our turn and we'll draw these five cards nice and then we'll add the second effort to it we'll move the threat meter up one more time and of course put out another cobra battalion the Baroness is currently in play, but I don't think that's going to stop me. We're going to go against the story mission here. We need to lead a leader to do this. I am going to use the vamp. We're going to lead Duke. Put one GI from your discard pile into your hand. Well, you know which one I'm going to choose is Leatherneck because it can use Marksman. We're going to choose any one skill. The one we're going to choose is Marksman. Uh, GIs on this mission gain an additional one wild skill. So it's actually a four. We're going to have four dice from him. And we're going to do uh, Leatherneck. That's four more. That's a total of eight. Then we'll do just a regular wild here for nine plus the one from this because it says uh, all GIs or GIs on this mission gain an additional plus one wild skill. So four, eight, nine, ten total dice. We need two, three, four, five, six, six successes on ten dice. Of course, I almost always forget about the complications. Let's draw them. This one says... Add one Cobra Battalion to the leftmost uncovered card in the lineup and then immediately draw and resolve another one of these complication cards. Ooh! So we'll grab one of these. We'll put it out covering the rocket launcher. I'm going to discard this and immediately draw another complication card. And we have Disrupt the Drone Stike. At the end of your next turn, fail the current story mission and discard this card. Well, we're definitely going to give that to Duke. It is a precision strike, so it's the end of his next turn. Then our second or third complication, this is another precision strike. At the end of your turn, plus one, it's explosives and tracker. Hmm, let's, oh, let's give that one to Scarlet. I think she can take care of that. We need six successes on ten dice. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on eight dice, so we are good. We can push down our threat meter by two and then defeat all Cobra battalions in the lineup. So the two that are here, we can simply place them in uh, back into their pile. We don't have to worry about them. Ha, huh, yeah. Minus two to our threat meter puts us all the way to green too. That is fantastic. We're definitely not done here though. We're going to take out this Baroness. So we can use Stealth and Tracker. Well, we have Stealth for three. If you're the active player, which we are, plus two wild skills. So we're actually having a total of five. We have Stealth here of three. No C Transport. I'm just using the regular vamp. So we have three, six, seven, eight. We need five successes. Oh, let's do it. We'll also add one more low light. Uh, so I was at 8, 9, 10, 11. Because remember, we can use Tracker and Stealth, so we can use him. So it's 11 dice, 5 successes. Let's take out this Baroness, shall we? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 successes done. I was thinking of holding on to Ripcord, but what the heck? He gives us two wild, and if he does defeat this, then guess what? <laughs> he will also get to push down the threat by one because of his effect. So I'm going to roll two dice. I have a wild, so it doesn't matter what these are. If I get two successes, I will complete this side mission. We've got this. We've got this. Two successes. Seriously, the dice are with me today. You know, I don't think I have failed a mission yet. <laughs> These G.I. Joes are elites. Our total recruit here is a little bit insane. 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Uh, I definitely think I'm going to grab this one for 3. We'll put that on top of our deck, which is empty. That's why I can't find it. We'll flip this over. That's a 5. So 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah. Uh, flip this one over. Oh, that only can have 1. Uh, 9, 10, 11, we'll put that out in the hangar, and yeah, 12, 13, 14, I really wanted the rocket launcher, so that's 14, <gasps> awesome, we've discarded our cards, we'll draw these three, heck, all three of them are ones we bought, <laughs> then we'll add two more, we'll add Duke, and we'll add Barbecue. We have two missions left, and you know what's going to happen. We're on to Act 3. That means these Level 3 Complication cards, as well as the discarded cards from the uh, Complication deck, are going to get shuffled in. And now we're going to read. Secure the rare volcanic element. Mined directly from the interior of a volcano, this volatile material will need coordinated air support to recover. 
So this gains two complication cards, and these could be bad. <laughs> At the end of each player's turn, so it's now Scarlet's turn, we have to increase threat by one because of this. And of course, don't forget, this needs seven successes instead of just six. That effect here is bad enough. I think Scarlet's going to go right for it. We're going to drop the vamp. We are going to send three of our Joes in our hand on the mission. So we have Wild Bill. He's going to give us three dice. We have Deep Six. He's going to give us two dice. So that's five. We have Jinx, who doesn't do anything for us other than give us one more. So that's uh, seven dice. <laughs> I have the Tranquilizer Dart. Useless. I do have a reroll, uh, but I am going to ask for some help from Duke. Duke will also play Barbecue, but the nice thing is, is he has the Rocket Launcher. So we can reveal these complications and then blow one up out of the sky. So let's see what they are, shall we? Our first one is at the end of your next turn, fail the current story mission and discard this card. Yeah, that's not terrible. Actually, I get to reveal both and I can decide. The other one is another precision strike. This one's really not bad. So I think I'm going to blow up. I'm going to use that rocket launcher and we're going to discard the search and rescue. And then this one will be with Duke. We're rolling nine dice. We need seven successes. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Oh boy. I can roll one more die. The most I can get is seven on that. Actually, that's what I want. Nope. Five. Okay. I need seven successes. I have a second effort. I'm going to put that out so I can re-roll this one and it goes off the board. So let me roll this one. Oh, it's only one success. One, two, three, four, five, six. We need one more success. I don't have it, you guys. The second to last mission. I thought for sure I had this. I don't have it. So I failed that mission. Well, let's just say I got a little greedy. We're going to push up our threat by one since we failed and we're going to put Shadow Storm into play. Assign Shadow Storm to a player as a side mission. At the end of your turn, increase the threat by two. Yeah, you know, I just depleted <laughs> Duke's hand. I mean, he does have a chance, actually. I think I'm going to give... I'm going to give Storm Shadow to Duke. Duke now does have two side missions in front of him, uh, but let's push up that threat meter. Let's move it up one space. Then we get to reveal the final mission. We have Destroy the Mass Device. Oh, and I should mention, because it hasn't mentioned or hasn't mattered before, but I'm actually going to put this in the failed pile. So if ever something says, how many missions have you failed? How many have you succeeded? That's in the failed mission spot. So we have Destroy the Mass Device. This is the final showdown. Either the Mass Device meets an explosive end or the entire world is doomed to obey Cobra. We need to grab one complication card. We need to place the Cobra Commander into play. If the threat meter is not in red, also put Destro into play. <laughs> yeah, it's not in red. So we're going to have Destro. We're going to have Cobra Commander. And we're going to have Storm Shadow out. We've seen Destro. Don't forget he is a 6, not a 5. Cobra Commander. He is a 7. At the end of each round, discard all uncovered main deck cards in the lineup. And then you refresh them. And while he's out, the story mission gets plus three difficulty. Here's the deal. I'm going to place this card in my reserve uh, because I'm hoping I can use this and we can maybe just one shot this mission, maybe during Duke's turn. We'll see if we can do it. We have a total of three, four, five, six recruit. I'm definitely grabbing the sniper rifle. It gives us plus two wild skill during the mission. That means we can roll plus two dice for whatever it is. Uh, we've got Alpine that is going to replace it. This will go on top of Scarlet's deck. We've discarded our hand. We only have one card in our deck. Our sniper rifle will draw two, three, four. We have four more cards right here. Scarlet, Wild Bill, and Deep Six. Don't forget, we have our Tranquilizer Dart. At the end of the turn, we have to push this up by one because we did not deal with the HISS tank attack. We assumed that we could handle it, but we didn't have any Joes left in our hand. Now we're going to go to the end of round. So it's going to say activate any penalties. The story mission first. Uh, we don't have to worry about that one. Uh, then card effects. So that's the Cobra Commander is going to happen. And then the threat meter. Cobra Commander requires us to take all six of these, discard them, and draw six new ones. Overall, that isn't terrible, except for remember, if we run out of these cards, we lose the game. So he's just trying to push us to the end. After activating the Cobra Commander, we of course need to move this up one, and we also need to put out one Cobra Battalion. So it's not the end of the world. We're still doing okay, but we need eight successes 
on the destroy mass device. Actually, right now it would actually be 11 because of the Cobra Commander. Duke is going to start his turn by placing himself into the reserve. He's then going to simply use these two cards for the recruit, not even trying to do a mission. We have a total of three plus one plus two more. So three, four, five, six, six total recruit. If you gain the two recruit from here, the next card you re recruit this turn goes into a teammate's hand. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and recruit this knowing is half the battle. And that's going to go into Scarlet's hand. How ridiculous is that? Okay, then we're going to discard those two. We're going to draw five cards. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to cry a little bit because we're going to watch our threat meter fly up the board. This is our hand. We have two side quests we did not take care of, so we're going to increase the threat by three. But you know, that's okay. One, two, three. We're only three away from losing. <laughs> Moving to Scarlet's turn, though, she's going to use the Tranquilizer Dart. Flip all Cobra officers face down until the end of your turn. While face down, they are not in play. You know what that means? The Cobra Commander's not in play and Destro. That means no re-rolling of dice, and the story difficulty is now only 8 instead of 11. We're then going to bring in the APC. We can bring in 8 different characters. Well, we'll bring in Scarlet. Uh, we'll also bring in Deep Six, that's two. We'll bring in Wild Bill, that's three. We're going to ask Duke who he wants to bring. He's going to bring himself, that's four. Duke has the effect to put one GI from your discard pile into your hand. Uh, yeah, you know which one I'm going to grab? Spirit and Freedom, and we're definitely going to play him. So that's five. We can do three more. We'll do Leather Neck for six. We'll definitely do low light for seven. He gets plus one wild because we're in the red. Oh my gosh, we can do one more. We'll end with a basic Joe for eight. We have eight Joes going on this. We're going to figure out how many dice in a second. Let's flip over our complication card. We have another precision strike at the end of your next turn. Fail the current story mission and discard this card. Uh, we can each have two, so that means Scarlet has to have the Night Raven attack. Let's see if we can count this all right. So we're going to choose Marksman for this, Marksman or Explos Explosives. We're going to do Marksman. This says GIs on this mission gain one additional wild skill. So three plus one is four. Then we have five, six plus one is seven. Uh, plus one for uh, plus one hit for each side quest that we have. We have two side quests in play on us so that means we actually get two auto successes already so we needed an eight uh, that's going to be down to a six we only need six successes we're at seven dice eight nine ten eleven twelve uh thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two 23 24 24 dice can we get six successes on 24 dice i think yes we'll start with eight dice two four five six seven eight we already have enough we just won the game and that my friends is the gi joe deck building game hopefully this helps you see if you're interested in this game i certainly enjoyed it i love the different side missions i love the main mission and how you can work together on group missions but you have the side quests as well or the side missions as well i like the officers i like the story the only thing i would say is that i feel like playing two missions a chapter is good three missions a chapter just kind of gets long uh but i still overall really love the game this playthrough i hardly did anything cool with the vehicles i used one vehicle i think but i've played other ones where i've used vehicles all the time so you know this vehicle that i used it would now go into the discard pile of scarlet's deck the next time she drew it she instead of putting it into her hand what it would it would immediately go to the hanger the thing is then is you have one less card so you've got to watch out for that um, yeah, a lot of people have said this has been really difficult, but I haven't found that. I, have, I haven't lost the game. So uh, I definitely appreciate the expert mode cards. And let me know if I'm doing something wrong because I may have missed something. Regardless, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll make sure to catch you at the next stop.